We're going to look at number eight from section 7.4. This is linear programming. I'm going to do this in a few parts here just so you can see the parts you need to see. Uh, so this first part here, uh, we're going to be looking at setting up the simplex tableau, the initial simplex tableau. And um, it, like any other linear programming uh, problem, we have um, a function here we're trying to maximize, z equals 5x1 minus x2 plus 3x3. So there's three variables there. And uh, we have these constraints. We have three constraints. And uh, then we also have these. These are like common constraints that we, we always have in these problems. Uh, x1, x2, and x3 all must be greater than or equal to zero, non-negative. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set up our initial simplex tableau. And uh, we're going to have um, we're going to have four rows in this. I can tell because there are three main constraints here, and then you also need a row for the objective function. Uh, we're also going to have um, three uh, slack variables uh, because again there are three constraints, uh, not because there are three variables like three main variables. Okay, the slack variables come from the constraints. Each constraint needs its own slack variable. Um, so we'll have S1, S2, and S3, one for each of these. Uh, so for starters, uh, we're going to just put this uh, constraint going across the top row there. Uh, 3x1, 2x2, 1x3, so 3, 2, 1. And then, um, again, those are x1, x2, x3. Then the next three columns are for the slack variables, s1, s2, s3. And once you're done with however many slack variables you need, then we have a column for z. Then we're going to have our augmentation, our vertical line there. And then we're going to have the uh, number on the other side. So in this row, it's going to be a 36. And that's the end of this uh, matrix, this, this simplex tableau. And uh, for our slack variables, uh, again, uh, each constraint gets its own slack variable. So this one gets S1. So we're going to put 1 for S1, 0 for the other two slack variables, 0 for Z here. Uh, at the beginning, Z will only show up in that last row um, with the, uh, I'm sorry, not with that, with the uh, objective function. Let's do that last. All right. So next we do 1, 6, 1, and then uh, the slack variables, and then 24. So 1, 6, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now we're using S2 and not S1 or S3. No for Z. And then 24. And then we're going to do the same thing with the third one. 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then 0, 0, 1. We're including S3 in this one. 0 for Z again. And this one's 32. And then finally, that last row is going to be our objective function. And for this one, um, what we're going to do is we're going to bring all three variables, x1, x2, and x3, over to the left side with the z. So you're like subtracting them over. So we've got um, negative 5x1, so negative 5. We are going to have positive x2, positive 1, because when you bring it over, right, you're adding x2 to both sides. And then negative 3x3. Um, and then 0 for the three slack variables, and then 1 for z, because what we did is we brought all three of these over to the z side of the equation, so it's plus 1z. And then what's left on the right side of that equation, it, once those go over, is just 0. So we'll have a 0 over here to start with. So this is our initial simplex tableau. And um, I'm going to stop this video in a second and go on to part two. But before I do, I just want to point out a couple things for one thing. Um, you can see when you set this up, uh, if you like, kind of think just to the left of this line and starting with the slack variables, you get a, a square identity matrix here when you set it up every time, right? You have the, the three slack variables in this case used once each and then Z and then everything else is zeros there. So however many slack variables there are, um, that's going to also be how many rows there are up here, right? Because each of those is a constraint. Each constraint gets a slack variable, so those go together. And so that's, that's going to be um, a feature that shows up in this initial simplex tableau every time. And one more thing, just a word on slack variables and what they're for. Uh, the whole point is uh, this, 
this matrix is a system of equations. So the constraints are equations and so are the, or so is the objective function. But in order for the constraints to be equations, remember they're not, originally they're not, right? They're inequalities, right? Less than or equal to. Uh, so the whole point of the slack variable is to make up the rest. What I mean by that is, um, if you just look at this part, 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 1x3, that has to be less than or equal to 36, right? So um, if it's equal to 36, that's fine. That's an equation, right? But if it's less than 36, um, what about the rest? And that's what the slack variable is for. That's the rest. So if 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 1x3, if that added up to, let's say, 30, in a solution that we find, then um, S1 is the other six, right? And again, the three variables, X1, X2, X3, and also the three slack variables, none of those can be negative, okay? So, um, which, you know, again, is why if these three, they have to add up to less than or equal to 36, and then that slack variable is a positive number or zero, and it's the rest of it. It, it would be zero, if these are exactly 36 when you add them up, then, then there's no slack there. Uh, I'll talk more about that in probably another video when we're looking at an actual word problem application, because then the slack has a little more meaning. You can actually see like what it, what it means in, in the problem. Uh, but that'll be it for uh, part one here. In part two, I will go through the pivoting process.